very uneventful. Um, <laughs> good afternoon. Uh, I would like to call to order today's official uh, board meeting for the Greater Dayton RTA. Uh, first, if we could start off with Pledge of Allegiance. If we could have the roll call, please. Present. 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 So I can declare a quorum. Um, everyone was presented with a copy of today's agenda. If we could have a motion for the approval of the consent agenda, please. So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and second that we have an approval of the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The minutes from our September 7th board meeting were presented to all the board members, and you have had the opportunity to read and go over them. If there are no amendments or corrections that need to be made to the minutes, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the September 7th board meeting. So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and second that we approve the minutes of the September 7th board meeting. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. We will now move on to the committee reports. The financial personnel and committee uh, personnel committee meeting reports by Ms. Matthew Stinson, who is not here. So, do I get to delegate or do I just have to do this? Do this with us? You can do it. I knew bring, you were going to. Bring, brings back memories for you. <laughs> well, first. <clears throat> First, we have action item number two, resolution 2021-10-1, authorizing staff to seek fast, act flexible funding to support transit projects. The Greater Dayton <coughs> Regional Transit Authority has been notified by the Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission regarding the solicitation of new transportation projects under the surface <clears throat> the surface transportation program. Once submitted, applications for the proposed new projects are to be reviewed and evaluated for possible inclusion of the state transportation improvement program. In reviewing the region's transportation needs, staff has developed <clears throat> the following project that is eligible for flexible funding and that the proposal has been scrutinized in the context of MVRPC practices and policies. Cost of buying five large transit buses, the RTA's only project for this funding. Solicitation for the RTA will provide the required local match funds of 592,000. Competition for these funds is expected to be substantial with applications due October 7th and require RTA Board of Trustee approval. Mr. Rosinski presented this action item at our board meeting and the supporting documents are included in today's board package. Bob's available to answer any questions at this time. Hearing none, based upon the recommendation of the committee, <clears throat> I move that the Board of Trustees approve resolution number 2021-10-1, authorizing staff to seek fast and fast act flexible funding to support transit projects. Second. So it has been properly moved and second that we approve action item number two. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. And I have a question. Am I allowed to take my mask off because I am sweating and I am already in a hamster yes. wheel? Yes. Okay, all right. I am a fully vaccinated person too, but all of you are substantially far enough away from me so that if I wasn't. So, <clears throat> action item number three, medical insurance. This procurement is for group medical and prescription drug coverage for administrative employees of the RTA. 
The RTA provides health coverage in accordance with its labor agreement with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees and Administrative Employee Benefits Plan. Group medical and prescription drug coverage is coming before the board at this time because the current contract for fully insured group medical and prescription insurance expires December 31st, 2021, keeping the cost of the health care manageable for both RTA and employees supports RTA's core value of stewardship. Dr. Thomas presented this action item at our meeting and the supporting documentation is included in today's board package. Staff is available to answer any questions that you might have at this time. Hearing none, based upon the recommendation of the committee, I move that the Board of Trustees approve a contract award to Medical Mutual of Ohio for a fully insured medical and prescription insurance in the total estimated amount of $1,842,292 for one year based on the current census. This procurement will be funded with operating funds. Second. It's been properly moved and second <clears throat> that we approve action item number three, medical insurance. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. <clears throat> Action item number four, dental insurance. In order to provide continued dental insurance for RTA employees, proposals were presented or requested for group dental insurance for all salaried and hour, hourly employees. In addition, proposers were asked to provide fully insured rates of self-funded administrative services only rates. This procurement is consistent with RTA's core value of our people by providing dental insurance at affordable rates to employees, recognizing their importance while upholding our responsibility to good stewardship of financial resources. Dr. Thomas presented this action item at our meeting and the supporting documents are included in today's board package. Staff is available to answer any questions at this time. Hearing none, based upon the recommendation of the committee, I move that the board of trustees approve a contract award to superior dental care for fully insured coverage in the total annual estimated amount of $204,507 per year for three years totaling $613,521. The actual award amount will vary based, uh, based on the census. Group dental insurance is included in the operating budget. It's been properly moved and second that we approve action item number four, dental insurance. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Action item number five, printing services. The purpose of this procurement is to partner with dedicated printing companies that can deliver first class printed material that represent RTA's professionalism and brand standards to customers, stakeholders, and the community. The requirements for the RTA printing services were divided into two scopes of work. Scope A consists of general and specific print media, and Scope B consists of timetables, aka bus schedules. Uh, this project is consistent with RTA's core values of stewardship and quality service to ensure our customers are well informed and are well up to date information at all times. Mr. Rosinski presented this action item at our meeting, and the supporting documents are in today's package. He is also available for any questions that you might have at this time. Hearing none, based upon the recommendation of the committee, I move that the Board of Trustees approve a contract award to Graphics Terminal Incorporated and Patent Acquisition Corporation, DBA Think Patented. The scope of work A, general and specific print media, will be awarded to both Graphics Terminal and Think Patented. The aggregate expenditure shall not exceed $77,212 per year for three years for a total of $231,636 and shall be divided as needed among the two firms. The scope of work B, timetable, shall be awarded to Graphics Terminal Incorporated for $66,209 per year for three years for a total of $198,627. The grand total award shall not exceed $430,000 $263. The option years will not be awarded as highest ranked proposers did not propose pricing for them. This procurement will be funded with operating funds. Second. It's been properly moved and second that action item number five be approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carried. 
Action item number six, temporary services authorization. RTA currently has a contract under small purchasing for temporary services with Dunson and Associates in a not to exceed amount of $100,000. Due to the termination of the janitorial services contract, it will be necessary to temporarily hire janitorial personnel under this temporary services contract for approximately 20 weeks until such a time a new janitorial service contract may, can be awarded by the board. As a result, spending authorization for the temporary services contract will need to be increased. The temporary employees will be required to handle all janitorial duties at the Right Stop Plaza and the four transit centers. In addition to the day-to-day -day cleaning and disinfecting responsibilities, these duties will include cleaning exterior areas as needed to, <clears throat> to present a neat and clean appearance for RTA. This project is is an emergency project and it is our responsibility to maintain a safe environment for all customers and staff. During these times of COVID-19, the importance of disinfecting all surfaces and maintaining a safe and clean environment are the top of importance <clears throat> and priority. This project is consistent with RTA's core values of safety and stewardship. Ms. Stanforth presented the action item at our meeting and the supporting documents are included in today's package. She is available for any questions that anyone might have at this time. Hearing none, based upon the recommendation of the committee, I move that the Board of Trustees approve a contract award to Dunson & Associates for temporary services in the amount of $182,772 plus 20% for unforeseen contingencies in the amount of $36,554 for a total of $219,326. The $100,000 awarded under the small purchasing procedures is now ratified for the grand total award of $319,000 $326. This procurement will be funded with operating funds. Second. It's been properly moved and second that action item number six be approved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Action item number seven, self-insurance fund authorization. From January 1, 2014 through May 31, 2019, the RTA provided a self-insured health plan to employees. In order to meet the requirements of Ohio law, a reserve fund was established and maintained to ensure RTA's ability to fund claims if they exceeded budget premium equivalent rates paid for the RTA and its employees covered by the plan. The reserve fund had a final positive balance of $1.85 million at the plan's close. Of that Amount two hundred sixty-seven thousand was refunded to employees, and eighty-seven thousand was provided to RTA's employee benefit fund uh, from employees no longer at RTA. After refunds and transfers, the employee benefit fund had a balance of one point four nine six million. The remaining fund balance has has been and will be utilized for employee incentives during COVID nineteen pandemic. Ms. Stanforth presented this action. Uh, item at our meeting and the supporting documents are in the board packet. Mary is available for any questions that the board may have at this time. Hearing none, based upon the recommendation of the committee, I move that the board of trustees ratify previous COVID-19 wellness incentives along with RTA's ongoing cash vaccine incentive program with an estimated cost of $500,000 along with the use of any remaining funds for other employee wellness related initiatives. This action item has no impact on operating expenses. Second. It's been properly moved and second that action item number seven, self-insurance funds authorization be approved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. And I think I have here other, other items to mention. Uh, Ms. Stanforth reported the August financial report for the current sales tax receipts. The continued positive financial re results will, resu uh, will position RTA for a smoother economic recovery post COVID. Uh, currently RTA is positioned to restore the unrestricted net position shortfall, which was caused by the state pension system funding liability. And that concludes that report. So you guys have thrust me back into reading all of those things <laughs> in the absence of some of our other fellow board members. 
We'll now move on to uh, planning committee, um, Ms. Howard. Thank you. Um, the finance personnel and planning committees met for a jointly held meeting on September 21st. And while we do not have any action items to bring before you, we do have important updates to provide. At the committee meeting, a summary document of recent activities in the customer and business development department was provided. Updates to the TAP pay project were shared as September 1st marked the start of all RTA vehicles only accepting TAP pay, cash, coins, and exact change. RTA is preparing to exclusively use TAP pay for fares beginning November 1st, and cash will no longer be accepted. To prepare riders for the transition, signage is installed on every fare box, alerting riders that the fare box will be retired soon. As of August 21st, only 9% of riders were using cash and 81% were using TAP pay. The other 10% of riders fall under the old system passes and free ride categories. Other updates included RTA's It's Not Just a Job recruitment campaign in September in an effort to increase hiring efforts. The communication team interviewed several longtime employees about why they like working at the agency. This included an ad highlighting RTA CEO Bob Rosinski, who started his career 32 years ago as a temp and is now the leader of the organization. The testimonials were used on TV as well as social media to also promote the August 26th job fair at Goodwill Easter Seals. The career fair had a great turnout with 43 applicants. Pictures from the fair were used on social media to encourage anyone who could not attend to apply online. This concludes my report and I will be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Howard. No questions. We'll move on to the next line item, the Chief Executive Officer's report, Mr. Rosinski. Yep, I just wanted to provide a quick update on the uh, funding situation in Washington, D.C. Uh, on, on Friday, they did, the Department of Transportation was not funded because they did not include that department in the continuing resolution where the other departments were funded because they thought they would have a vote on the infrastructure bill on Thursday. That didn't happen, so over the weekend, they passed a continuing resolution for the Department of Transportation through the end of this month. Um, all of that means is if they are closed, we can't access federal money that we might need. Um, we do maintain a couple months supply of funds to cash flow through situations like this. So I don't see an impact in the short term, even if we do not get a transportation bill yet this month, which, you know, crystal ball, who knows? So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. And I will be requesting a brief executive session for a labor update. Thank you, Mr. Rosinski. Any questions for our Chief Executive Officer? With that, do we have any old business? I don't believe so. Is there any new business that we have? I don't believe we have any of that either. Which brings us on to public comment, which we have six. We have six requests for public comment. So, each citizen wishing to make a public comment to the board during regular scheduled board meetings um, must register prior to the meeting and are called in order by completing the public comment registration form. Each completed form must contain the citizen's full name, address, including city, state, zip code, organization they represent, if any, and the subject matter of their content. The form must be submitted to the secretary prior to the meeting. Forms and materials and all that have been distributed because you have already all filled them out. <clears throat> when called upon by the president, or in this case the vice president, the committee uh, chair to, uh, to speak, each citizen shall approach the podium. And I don't know if we have everybody approaching the podium or not. We have a microphone available if they need. Okay, there's a microphone that, that is available. Um, each person is limited to three minutes. The speaker must uh, will be informed when 30 seconds remain. When the, a lot of three minutes are up, the president or committee chair will say the time's up and the speaker will cease speaking and leave the podium, surrender the handheld microphone. Each citizen is per permitted to address the board only once during a meeting and each speaker must maintain civility and should be courteous and professional 
and represent themselves. The committee chair may terminate the speaker's time when a comment or gestures are profane, vulgar, obscene, or threatening. Any person who poses a threat to public safety is subject to being removed from the meeting. So, that being said, we will call our first person, and Ms. Lynetta Day. Hello, my name is Lynetta Day. I stay at 1465 West, Thir West Third Street, apartment 118. I'm talking about, <clears throat> I gotta get my voice together. I wanna talk about the scene rise. Um, why do these rides have to stop? And we seniors are really depending on that ride. I know Friday was my last day on the bus on, on 64, and everybody on there said they need that bus, and even not uh, everybody I talked to to ride the bus with me because it'd be packed. And they need to ride rides. And um, why do we have to pay $5? And we got, the, and we got that tap pay to ride the bus. That's it. Thank you, Ms. Day. Next will be Sandra Smothers. Yes, ma'am. My name is Sandra Smothers. I live at 215 McDaniel Street, apartment 207, the Asbury Apartments. And I'm here today to speak about this Senior Easy Rider. I was very disappointed this morning, no bus at 737. Uh, Y'all say you ain't got enough drivers, give them some incentive to maybe they'll stay. But my point is, it only takes one driver to drive that route in a week. And we're getting sick and tired of the bull crap that y'all are putting out with us. Uh, the senior easy rider should have never been cut from the from the service. We seniors have to have something. Y'all wait till the winter time to give it to us. It's getting close to winter, snow and ice out there. And then how are we supposed to get to the store? Kroger's, Myers, Walmart said y'all are taking business from them, doing this to them, because they look forward to seeing us every week. these buses to the gambling joint seven days a week and add extra trips on 34 on Saturday and Sunday, uh, I guess uh, the gambling joint's more important than the seniors. Y'all ought to be ashamed of y'all selves. And as, as I said in the last meeting, it's a big mistake. And the house need to be cleaned down here because some, something's wrong up in this company. I hate to say it, but I'm going to say what's on my mind. As I said, in the newspaper thing, I'm sick and tired of it. So I hope y'all read the newspaper report that we put out there. And we're not gonna give up. We're gonna come at you until you give it back to us. We want that bus service reinstated. I don't care if it's in the middle of the pick and you have to pick over. We want our bus service reinstated. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mothers. Next we have Charlene Dawson. My name is Charlene Dawson. I live at 6045 North Main Street, Siena Village, and that's Dayton. We have a lot of seniors in our building, even though they drive. They do not do it in the wintertime because, number one, the bus, that's the number 16 route, is too far to walk. The traffic on North Main Street is dangerous. I would like to know why are you charging us $5 in our building, the people who manage it give us the tap cards. Why can't we use the, the tap card to do that? And if we get a busload of people, why do all of us have to pay $5? Five, five going and five coming. That sucks really big, big time. It really does. A lot of people cannot afford that. And with the new increases, we get an increase in our rent every year. We can't afford that, that $10. We are seniors. We have earned the right to have this bus. And for you guys to take it away, remember, you're going to be older, too. If some, of you, some of you are getting there, OK? You're going to need some transportation, too. 
I don't depend on my family members to come and get me because I'm independent. I pay my own rent, I pay my own way. This $5 sucks, it really does. And you have disappointed a lot of seniors, especially at Siena Village, because they don't know now how they're gonna get around. And like them, my family members work also, and I don't depend on them because they have their own families. So I hope you take this into reconsideration and get us our bus back. We need it. And like she said, winter is coming. It is not easy to get across North Main Street. And when the snow plows come, they pile everything up on the sidewalks, which means I have to stand in the street to get the bus. And that's dangerous too. A lot of our seniors over there cannot make it down that hill or back up. So please consider, reconsider what you've done. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next, next we have Mary Miller. My name is Mary Miller. I live at 229 Colgate, uh, Dayton 45417. I too am a paratransit rider, certified, went through the agonizing summer certification that they required. Now we're being told anyone can ride the bus if they pay a premium of $1.50 more. This is gonna take space from the seniors that are certified and that their doctors have said and stand behind the fact they cannot make it to a fixed route. The Easy Rider also was a ride for seniors that were certified or uncertified. It was a cheap $1 fee if you didn't have the paratransit. If you had the paratransit card, it was free. It was taken, it was one driver per week going the route. We don't require four or five drivers to change but when you did the pick, I guess you had Andy, a trainer, who took it, and we never saw the man. Our route became whoever's, some good, some bad. But the fact that he was allowed to close out drivers that wanted the route, that were loved on the route, because they got up out of their seat, they performed a service to help us on the bus, to secure our walkers, it made no sense. You got one driver from that route. Were you that short? And if you were that short, you need to relook and re-examine what you're doing to your drivers. Because your service is not something we take lightly. And with you getting tax dollars from the county to help fund it, it makes no sense. It's winter time coming. And like she said, we can't cross Main Street. You're putting more people in peril than you saw by taking that one driver. So please reconsider what you've done and change it. And adding the non-certified people to the paratransit route, it's gonna be a disaster. Get people to certify and actually do what is needed to get the route. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Uh, next, we have Candace Woods. Yes, my name is Candace Woods, and I live at 6215 North Main in Siena Springs. And this elimination of Route 64, 65, and 66 was a big mistake. I'm like them. I relied on that bus every week. It only took one driver to drive three routes, and she did a daggone good job. Now, Come to find out, I, I paid my dues. I'm 60 years old. I paid my dues to this country. For seven years, I was in the military. Never in my mind, when I was 18 years old, I was going to turn around and go through this when I got in my golden years. OK, it's not fair. You took something from us that we relied on every day. OK, this $5 for non-certified 
uh, paratransit to ride, going to the store and 350 for ones that are, uh -uh. it's not gonna work. And then when I was in the military, I learned from my, my drill instructors that used to say, if you can't do the task as put in front of you right and correctly and in a timely fashion, then why the heck are you collecting a paycheck? Because it don't make no sense. It don't. And I'm tired. Thank you, ma'am. Our next comment comes from Carol Anderson. Uh, hello, my name is Carol Anderson. I live at 1461 Cornell Drive, Dayton, Ohio, um, apartment 107, Omega Senior Loft. I am very disappointed in RTA. I was wondering, what were you guys thinking? I thought you guys were going to give the, it was going to be a temporary thing. But I'm looking at it now, it looks like it's a permanent thing. It looks like you guys are out for money and you're not trying to help the seniors. You're not trying, you're not looking out for the people, the public. You're looking out for your own pockets. And I think that is wrong. These, these people depend on this bus to take them back and forth to the grocery store each week. It only takes one driver. And for you to get a, have a bus to go all the way out to the gambling casinos, you to, to consider the gambling people who want to spend their money gambling instead of the seniors. I think that I'm very disappointed, very disappointed. The seniors don't ask for much. All we want is need is one bus driver to take us back and forth to the grocery store during the week. Only takes one. Why RTA could not provide one, I don't know. But when, then when they, the ad comes in the paper, then they're going to come back and say, hey, okay, we'll take you to the store, but we're going to charge you $5. Okay, so that means you're out, out for the money because they should be able to use their tap pay. So I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. I'm very disappointed. And I wish that you could reconsider. And you guys have a, I ain't gonna say, hey, great day. I'm just gonna say, you know, I'm, I'm just praying the Lord to change your mind. Thank you, ma'am. That will conclude our public comments and now we'll move on to board member comments. And we will start down to my left with Ms. Howard. Thank you, as I just put a piece of candy in my mouth. Um, early this morning, I was at Miami Valley Hospital North for our first Break for Breakfast event for breast cancer awareness. And I looked up and I saw the October RTA bus go by. Um, and um, looks great as it usually does. But I do have a question for staff. Are we running the breast cancer awareness bus this month as well? You know, we, we switched last year just to the calendar bus and breast cancer is a feature, but I will point out that um, if you're a late night person, our building is lit up in pink um, for most of the, uh, the night uh, in support of breast cancer and that will run for the whole month. Very good. Thank you. No comments. One quick comment, and that is on the way here, I happen to see the uh, first one for me anyway, the community painted bus, and it happened to be the Kettering bus, and it looks pretty darn good. Thanks. Those will be rolled out officially in a couple weeks. Great. I guess I'm a bit confused about a $5 pay to ride the senior bus, uh, comments that have been made today. And can you just clarify that for me? Right, we got a grant from through the MVRPC to expand uh, transportation options to seniors who might not be able to do our fixed route but don't qualify for project mobility or the connect paratransit service as it's known. We've always provided trips or at least for the past several years on connect to non ADA eligible clients but those are $30 per trip and our grant allows us to reduce that to 
five dollars a trip for seniors only uh, anybody with a qualified disability for paratransit continues to ride for 350 and they can use their tap pay card and we are looking into having the tap pay card usable on the uh, five dollar senior fare as well but that requires some technical program from the vendor which may not be available for several months yet thank you Uh, the only comment that I have is that we have we are in search of drivers. I mean, we would love to have more drivers. I, I think we, I mean we're we've got campaigns out, incentives out. We're uh, we've come to the community asking you to help us uh, look for drivers. It's not our intention ever as a board or as an organization to cut service. Um, these are unprecedented times and. It's unfortunate that these things happen, but it's the times that we're in. But I, I'm not saying that to try to lessen how you feel or, or how it's impacted your lives. But I do want to once again say, please help us. We need help trying to find people to come and drive the buses because we just don't have them. Um, so I would ask everyone to, to, you know, to please send us some people that can that can do that. So. Um, Moving on from there, uh, there is, I understand, a request for an executive session. Correct. Okay, so we need to call the roll that so that we can go into executive session. We need to, is it uh, for the purpose of discussing labor matters? No. Oh, we we so need a, a, an explanation of what the topic is generally. Okay, so we need to, we're requesting an executive session to discuss a labor matter. And there needs to be a motion to go into, and then a second, and then we'll take a roll call. Move to go into executive session. I'll second. For a discussion of labor matters. And I'll second. All right, that motion to go into executive session to discuss a labor matter, matter has been properly moved and second. Could we have the roll, please? Yes. 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 And then as a matter of courtesy to the public, I believe that once we're coming out of executive session, there'll, there'll be no further public matters to be discussed. Is that correct? That is correct. And I was just getting ready, to, okay. getting ready to say that. When we do reconvene out uh, back into regular session, there will be no more business to be conducted. Um, so now Bob has us at his mercy in the back room.